Okay, this is a rather interesting example of a compressible fluid, um, that being the atmosphere or air, and we're going to find the pressure at different depths in the atmosphere, but considering the compressibility of the air. And this is a, this is not typical of fluid problems, um, introductory fluid uh, fluid static problems, because most of the time we do assume. Um, incompressibility, that the fluid cannot change density. But sometimes we want to consider a density that is changeable. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And we're giving a fairly simple relationship between the density and the pressure. Okay? So we're told here, uh, air, unlike water, is compressible in everyday examples. It is a good starting approximation to say that the atm atmospheric density is proportional to atmospheric pressure. Okay? So what that would look like, what that statement looks like, right? So we want to start there. So start with proportionality. Okay? And so what that is telling us is that rho over rho naught is going to be equal to P over P naught. Okay? That's that's the putting in equation form the statement that they have um, this direct proportionality. Okay? So, in other words, if atmospheric pressure is doubled, then the density of the air is also doubled. Okay? So, using this approximation, what is the air pressure at the elevation of Mount Everest Peak, uh, which is 8,846 meters um, above sea level? We're going to take the sea level um, pressure as um, standard atmospheric pressure of 1.013 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square meter, and um, the initial density of air as 1.1225, okay? So that as we go up, um, so even if the air wasn't compressible, we would still expect the pressure at um, the top of a mountain to be lower because essentially we're in less depth. Um, and that's just like, that's just standard hydrostatic pressure. But here we're not going to have standard hydrostatic pressure because the, the rate of pressure is going to fall off more precipitously than it would if density was remaining constant. And let's show why. So standard hydrostatic pressure, actually let's say and, standard hydrostatic pressure, okay, for an incompressible fluid is P equals rho G Y. Okay, where Y is depth. Okay, but here's the thing. Here we're going to want to change, want to not consider a linear relationship, but instead of consider a relationship that n that is not necessarily linear, linear. In fact, it's definitely not. So instead, we're going to look at the differential of pressure. Okay. So I'm going to say, but here. We are interested in dp, which would be rho g dy. Okay? Okay, but again, what rho is not a constant. So actually, let me show that explicitly by actually putting rho as a function of y. So you can see what we're going to do here, right? We're going to have to integrate across y, okay? All right, so um, what I want to do then is actually put in the functional dependence, and I'm going to show that up here by solving for rho. All right, so rho is rho naught times p over p naught, okay? So then let's insert that into our expression. So we'll have our differential of pressure is going to be some initial density, in the case of air, we know what it is, some changing pressure, all right, some initial pressure at sea level, our baseline pressure, which we given is given, and then dy. Okay. Okay. And furthermore, we have to make the change here. Since y is measured up, from sea level, then pressure must decrease as we gain as we gain elevation. And so what that's going to look like is we're going to have that dp is an equal negative rho naught p 
P over P naught G dy. Okay? All right, so I'm going to put, um, I'm going to collect my variables. So I'm going to put my pressure variable on the same, same side as my pressure differential. Okay? And then the other side will remain unchanged. Rho naught, except I'll leave it kind of as a maybe a more clear fraction like this with the G in front. All right, and then we have our two initials, our initial density and our initial pressure, right? Just both just constants, and then dy. Okay, so now I'm going to set this up as a definite integral. All right, so we'll say now set up as definite integral. All right, and what is that going to look like? Okay, so that's going to be. Now, definite integral, but I'm not going to put in values. I'm just going to put in variables. Still definite, so I don't have to worry about initial conditions to solve for their constants. We could do it that way. But instead, look at our limits of integration. We're going to go on this end from P naught to P, okay? Because, right, at C level, at our value of Y equals 0, that's what P naught is, okay? And then this is just DP over P, all right? And then over here, we'll pull out the constants in front. Rho naught, P naught, okay? And then Y is going to go from 0 to some height Y above sea level. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this integral. All right, so what is this going to look like? Well, this, the, um, the left-hand side is going to become um, the natural log, okay? And we're going to integrate that from P naught to P. natural log of P minus the natural log of P naught, right? And that was just evaluated at our limits of integration, All right? And then this is negative G, rho naught over P naught, and this will just be Y, all right? So that integral is quite simple. Uh, we're going to use uh, a law of uh, natural logs here, law of logarithms, to make the minus here become division within the logarithm. So this is going to be the natural log of P over P naught is an equal negative G rho naught over P naught times Y. Okay, um, and then we want to uh, solve for the pressure. All right, so I'll raise everything to the power of E. All right, so then we're going to have P over P naught is going to equal the exponential negative G rho naught p naught times y, okay? And then multiply both sides by our initial pressure. So p as a function of y, just to show it you know, in function for function notation, is going to be um, p, all right, p naught, rather. And then our exponential, which is negative, so it's an exponential decay. All right, well, oh, that's rho naught, the numerator. Okay, why does it make sense to, for it to be exponential decay? Well, because it, it should be falling off, as I said, precipitously, right? It's going to fall off more quickly than if the fluid wasn't compressible. Because So in other words, as you move up in the atmosphere, the atmosphere becomes thinner as well as just less of it being above you. So therefore, the pressure is going to decrease by those two effects simultaneously. All right. So great. Now we, uh, now we have our function. We, um, and specifically, uh, we can plug in the values that we were given. Okay, I am going to go ahead and put a box around this because this is an important general result. All right, in this case, we're just going to happen to apply it to Mount Everest. Okay, so Mount Everest had a height of 8,846. So let's see what the pressure should be like up there. Okay, so we'll say for y equals, oh, forgot the number already. All right, 8,846. So 8,846 meters. We're going to have the pressure at that height. All right, so let's use, so we got our baseline, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 pascals e to the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, our initial density was uh, 1.225. All right, so 1.225. Um, all right, and that's kilograms per cubic meter, all right? And then a 
again, atmospheric pressure at sea level. All right, and then our actual given elevation, 8,846 meters. All right, let's plug this in. All right, so one, oh, there we go, 1.01. 1 .01. Um, I believe we had one other significant figure that was given, uh, three, okay? So I'm going to zero one three times 10 to the fifth. All right, and then let's uh, do our exponential. So let's second, there we go, all right, negative 9.8, all right, multiplied by 1.225, all right, divided by, in parentheses, because right, we're going to have, I want to make sure we get this exponent to be in the parentheses, oh, there should be a, um, what was it, a 3? Oh, let's see. Yes, 1.13. 1 All right. So 3, then multiplication. All right. Times 10 to the fifth. All right. Close that off. Okay. Oh, close it off. But still in the exponent of our, um, our natural number here. Okay. And then times... 8846. All right. Oh. 8846. There we go. All right. What does it not like? Ah, oh, raw negative. All right, quick fix. All right, so then I get a pressure of thir 35,000 pascals rather than 101,000 pascals. So 3.55. One, because we were looking working with four sig figs here. All right, um, times ten to the four pascals. Right, and so that's pretty significant, right? We went up, um, you know, eight eight kilometers, or almost nine kilometers. You know, so pretty pretty high um, elevation gain. But the the pressure really fell off quite a bit, right? It's it's a third of what it was. And that would not be the case if we were t if we're making the assumption that the atmosphere was incompressible. We would get a significantly larger pressure because um, that that change in elevation would not cause such a um, a large um, such a big it, it that we the pressure would retain closer to the original atmospheric pressure if it wasn't for the compressibility. All right, so this is dealing with the interesting exponential that comes out naturally from having this sort of proportionality. All right, so I we can kind of not understate the fact that simply by having a proportionality such as this, the math gave us a exponential relationship sh shown here. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you.